Eli first time and say, Eli, did you call me? He said, no. Go back to your sleep. Second time again, he came to meet Eli and said, Eli, did you call me? He said, no. The third time, the Bible said, Eli perceived that Samuel probably might have been heard from God. And Eli told Samuel and said, hey, next time you hear, hear that voice, call your name again. Say, Lord, speak, it, speak for the, the, the servant, hear it. So he did that, and God spoke to him. God spoke so much things to him, and God, one of the things God spoke was how he felt about the children of Eli. The children of Eli are sons of Belia, that they are spoiling his work in his temple. They are taking advantage of the people who come to serve God. They are molesting them. They are oppressing them. And God said he was not happy. And God said, we're going to destroy them. God said so many things. He said, I'm going to destroy them. In verse 14, the Bible says, And wherefore have I sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning. God said, no matter the sacrifice they do, it won't change the situation. That he's so angry. How could you be raping women in the house who came to pray? How could you be stealing the things of God? All kinds of evil. Praise the Lord. We've had pastors who take advantage of women in the church. Hallelujah. And that's how Eli's sons were, and God was really angry. God was angry, and God said to somebody, I'm going to make, give judgment. So when, in the, in the, in the next day, Eli knew somewhere I heard from God. And Eli comforted Samuel, said, hey, Samuel, what did you hear God say? He, Samuel was afraid to tell Eli. Praise the Lord. And Eli pressurized him and said, did I not tell you that anytime you hear things like that, you tell me. Tell me what did you say. And Samuel ended up telling Eli and said, hey, this is what God said. Everything God said about your household was judgment. Now look at verse 18 again. Let's go to verse 18 and see the response of Eli. And Samuel told him every week and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemed him good. Eli was so nonchalant. He showed this nonchalant attitude even towards God's voice. He was just nonchalant about it. I said, hey, it doesn't matter. It's God that said it. Whatever is God, is God. Praise the Lord. God is talking to you. You know many of us come with such kind of hearts to church too? And God is speaking through the word of God or through a song. And God is speaking right into you through the word, through a sermon, through an exhortation and a preaching. I say, ah, I don't have, I'm tired. Whatever wants to happen, let it happen. No! You don't take things that way. You don't take the things of God for granted. If a word is coming to you when you are in the fellowship, receive it. God, God reveals to redeem. God is not sending his word to condemn or destroy you. God is sending his word to make you retrace your step. God is sending his word so that you can repent of anything you're doing. God is sending his word so he can empower you and equip you, to warn you, to guide you, to rebuke you, to instruct you. Because why he loves you. Eli was not challenged about it. He said, hey, let him do whatever he will do. He said, God should do whatever he will do. And I tell you, God did. God did. Praise the Lord. Now, that's the difference between people like Eli and David. Why God could say about David, a man after my own house, uh, a man after God's own heart. Why? In 2 Samuel chapter 12, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, in one of the verses there, I want you guys in media to concentrate with me. Hello, media, concentrate with me. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, in one of the verses in 2 Samuel chapter 12, when Nathan, the prophet, came to rebuke David about his adultery, and not just only his adulterous life, about murder in his hand, because he killed Bathsheba's husband, Uri. Praise the Lord. What did David do? David quickly fell down. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. How be it? Because by this day that has given, David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in. That's not where I'm going to. I'm talking about before 16, when the judgment was placed. David wept. Please talk to God for me. Thank you. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also have put away thy sin. That shall not die. David repented. Was a, oh, I've sinned. Because Nathan was afraid, just like Samuel was afraid to come outrightly to talk to David. You know, Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the judgment God pronounced. So Nathan was afraid to tell David outrightly. 
Because why? You also need wisdom to come to pass some messages to certain people of authority. And Sam, uh, David, Nathan gives an allegorical statement. He made a story. I say, hey, in, in, your, in, in, there was this, in your kingdom, King David, there was this man that had so many sheep, so many goats, so many oxen, so many cows, so many bulls. And there's this other man that had just one lamb. And this man that had a lot of sheep, his friend, his, his, his friend was coming from another country to come and visit him. He left all he had and went to go and take the only lamb of that man that had one. And killed the lamb to make dinner for his friend. Before he could finish, David was angry and said, Where is that man? Let me he need to they need to kill him. And he said, You're the one. <laughs> Why? Because he wanted to bring him first to the place of conviction, to be convicted. Praise the Lord. For he pointed to him straight and said, You are the one. He said, Hey, me? I said, you did this, you did that. You took Uriah's wife, you slept with her, and yet you killed Uriah. You blasphemed the name of God. You made an unbeliever to kill one of the soldiers of Christ. Oh, David was, David repented. Not justifying. Not, not that nonchalant attitude Eli gave. Eli just gave and said, hey, that's God. Let him do what he wants to do. What does it mean? It also means that no matter whatever you have done, at any time God meets with you, your repentance matters. You could repent genuinely. You could be sorry. God, God look for a contrite heart, a broken spirit. Oh Lord, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Not justifying yourself. God doesn't like people who justify themselves. Because even our righteousness are like fitting rags before him. Thank God for the righteousness of Christ that is imputed upon us. Hallelujah. Eli was, Eli was not challenged. Why? Do you know why Eli was not challenged? He has become too familiar with God. There's a saying that says too much familiarity brings contempt. Too familiar with God. No reverence for God and the things of God. Can I tell you one secret? For many old Christians, those of you that have been born again 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 5 years ago, if you're not careful, it is only very easy to be too familiar with God. But the Bible says, return back to your first love. You know, you're already used to the system. You already know that when you come to church, they will say hallelujah, so you can say hallelujah, amen, amen. You know that already. You know time for church. So you even come without an expectation. You are so used to the whole situation. You understand that eh, maybe it's moving now. Or maybe it's time for offering. Or maybe it's time for us to pray. Maybe it's time for the... You are so familiar with God. We are, some of you, at the time you first gave your life to Jesus, when the call for prayer comes, you see yourself want to lie down. When they say it's time for church, you are rushing. Or your personal devotion time, you don't play with it. Now you say, God, understand. You understand, you know I'm tired. You understand. Lord, I'll meet you tomorrow. I plead the blood of Jesus. Good night, Lord. We'll see you tomorrow morning. That's not how you started with God before. Some of you used to even have time you have prescribed for yourself that you fast and pray. But now you don't do it anymore. You're so familiar with God. That's what brought Esther's own, uh, 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 Eli's own. Eli became so familiar with God. So when prophecies came that was supposed to warn him and bring him back to track, he took it. He commonized it. He was not challenged about it. He said, oh, it's God. Let him do what he would like. Praise the Lord. So if only Eli had, had reverence for God's word and God's things. Some folks don't have reverence even for the things of God anymore. The Holy Communion doesn't mean like anything to us. It doesn't look holy. It, it's not, you just see it as wafers. The Bible said they call it manna. And it was manna to them. But when Jesus Christ came, he said, I'm that manna that fell down from heaven. Your father called it manna, but me, I'm the bread of life. Those, they ate those ones. Because they saw it as manna, they died. There anyone that eats me will not die. Hallelujah. When you come to church without an expectation, and you become too used to every services, used to everything, say, okay, this Thursday is prayer meeting. I just go there. And you even don't even remember some of the songs you sang or even the prayer point you prayed in your spirit. 
not even the word. Some of you don't even remember the Bible. You know, some of you did your, you did some devotions this morning. If I ask you what's the topic, you don't even remember. You did it to fulfill our righteousness. Just that I did it. To make yourself know you did it. You're getting too used to God. You're getting too familiar with the things of God. Praise the Lord. You just get too familiar. And give the offering the way you want to, if you want to. I can clap if I have to. I can sing if I want to. I can dance if I want to. But that's not how God wants us to serve him. When we begin to live our life that way with our reverence for the things of God, we begin to commonize things. But people who don't commonize things, everything is revelation. Immediately they are coming to the church there and the usher says, can you go here? They say, hey, an angel just spoke to him to tell me to go here. I think that's where the angel wants to meet me in this service. They don't commonize it. Praise the Lord. When the very time the choir say, can we rise on our feet as we give God worship? Your hands are, and say, can you lift up your hands? And I say, who? Oh, Lord, hope you're seeing my own hands are above all of them. My hands are up here, Lord. They don't commonize it. They don't commonize the things of God. When the communion comes today, they don't see it as wafer. They begin, they tremble. They, their eyes is on the cross where he was broken. They hear it's a privilege and honor to hold his body. Hallelujah. But Eli became too familiar with God. So, friends, when you see Eli, tell him that. Praise the Lord. Next thing we probably might need to prescribe to Eli is Proverbs 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6. He failed. He would have had better children. So, who, the, the, the architect of the cho- of, uh, or the architect of the of Eli's children is who? Eli. That the children didn't do well, Eli was part of it. Praise the Lord. His children's failure was Eli. Because when a child fails, the father fails too. Praise the Lord. Now listen to this. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will know what? Apart from it. Train up a child. Train up a child. Train up a child. He failed to tra- in, tra- in, the, in training them. He failed to train them. Eli failed to train his children. What is training? The action of teaching a person. The action of teaching a person or even an animal a particular skill or type of behavior. Let's restrict it to humans. The action of teaching a person skill or type of behavior. The action of teaching a person a behavior. A kind of behavior, that action. When you fail to teach your children the way you want them to be behaving, to live their life, you fail. They will end up becoming like, none of our children will become like Eli children. So Eli failed to teach his children. It's our duty as parents to teach our children. Eli failed in teaching them, in teaching his children. And the Bible says that's some Proverbs 22 said, Train up a child, and training means teaching. We had people who have taught animals, and they, those animals behave very well. Growing up as a teenager, I had a dog. When I tell that dog to sit, he will sit. He barks very, his Jack, Jack was his stubborn dog. When Jack barks, you will hear it, and his eyes are green. You can't come here. But as green as his eyes is and he's huge and he's barking. When I said Jack stop, Jack stops. When I said Jack come, he come. If he trudge it when I said Jack, he looks back and come. Because you know I'm going to give him some spanking. And I give some reward to it. As a teenager, and everybody in the family in the house has hold over because we train. Jack doesn't eat anything except it is put on his plate. He won't eat anything on the floor. That's how he's been trained. Not to eat anything on the floor, except it is put on his plate. That's how we train Jack. Praise the Lord. I was supposed to be my dog, but I became everybody's dog in the house. Hallelujah. My children have been crying for dog, dog. I said, no. This place is too expensive for one. Hallelujah. So when you all get to your house, get your own. But what am I saying? People have trained dogs, even snakes, trained animals, and the animals follow accordingly. Train wild animals, they tame them. We're trained. If we can tame animals whose IQs are low. Now, for an Asian 
for an Alsatian dog, for a full-grown Alsatian dog, as a four-year Alsatian dog still does not have the IQ of a one-year-old child. Do you get that? And yet, it, it could be trained. Why can you as parents not train your children well? Eli failed in training his children. Train up a child the way he should go, and when he grow up, he will not depart from it. You want your child to be a child that will know how to fast and pray? Train him on how to know how to fast and pray. It is now you do that. You want a child to love God? Train the child to know how to love God, to come to church, how to come to church when you are going to church. You want to train a child to be respectful? Train that child how to, how to be respectful. Every training, you can train a child the way he, God has put them before you. They are God's heritage. You are caretakers. And God has put everything for you to train them. But see what Eli feared in training a child. He trained his children how to, he, he did not train his children how to fear God. That was the first way he failed. He didn't train his children to what? How to fear God. Now look at the secret about training children. The, ch- the issue is that that word training, when you say train up a child in the way he should go, is deep. It's really deep. Do you know why? Is that the first way you train a child is by example. You have to live by example. If you want your child to fear God, your child must see you as one who fears God. If you tell lies before them and you are telling them not to tell lies, you are confusing him and say, hey, daddy, tell lies. Why you say you should not tell lies? Like when I want to correct my children when they say anything wrong, I say, have I ever said a lie before you before? And they say, no, daddy. I say, why are you telling me one now? You can't do that. Come on. And I do what I need to do with them. You know what I do. I do it because I, give, I live by good examples. Praise the Lord. But you see, if you are a liar, you can't what? Teach him not to tell lies. I said, have you ever seen me lie before? He said, no. I said, hey, where did you learn it from? Do you understand what I'm saying? You train up a child in the way you should go. So he, he failed in teaching them how to fear God. The child you do not teach how to fear God today will give you heartache tomorrow. Any child you don't teach how to fear God. I've come to this system in America. Yeah, everybody is teaching a child how to, be, how to excel in sports, how to expect to be famous and all that. And those are those so same children who end up destroying them. Who give them pain at the later part of their stage. Who oh, you do not train your children to do all that. It's good to train them to do that. But the first value you need to give to your child is train them how to fear God. And it starts with you. How do you practically teach a child how to fear God? Your life must reflect the fear of God. The child should be able to see that you fear God. We see that my dad fears God. My children have seen me weep, asking God for mercy concerning anything I've done. Trembling for mercy. Lord, I'm sorry. So they know they, oh, that they, 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 they can't they can learn anything differently. See, we can't do that, child. You know why we can't do that? Because, oh, daddy, why did you not do so? I said, I can't do it because so, so. One of my children asked me one day, I said, daddy, I said, you paid me more than the 10% in your tithe and all that. Are you actually seeing the result? Say, yes. I said, this is what God does. God will that my income can't give me this. And you just a part of the benefit. When I finished with her, she said, okay, okay. So I thought, I've at early age, you give them a gift. I teach them how to pay tight in it. So it's not going to be a struggle. A pastor that will pastor them in the future won't have a struggle and say, hey, pay your tight, give up. No. He's been trained already. And they've seen me do it. Praise the Lord. Teach your children by example. Live by example. You want them to be respectful? They must see you being respectful. How can you be with my, how can my child be with me? And it's an elderly person, and I'm telling the person, elderly person, good morning, man. Good. And the child is going with, with my, hey, what are you supposed to do? You show your courtesy. And it's, she saw me do it, isn't it? So she will follow. That's how it is. We teach them not to be disrespectful. That's not boldness. That's not confidence. For your children to be disrespectful. That a six year will take a magna gum to school and shoot her te- his teacher. Can you imagine? Praise the Lord. 
Because their parents don't fear God. Your parents, you must show the fear of God. How can you teach your children not to get involved in immorality? When your children are saying that you are watching pornography. When your children are saying that you are committing adultery. We, had, we watched a movie at the time in my family. And when we were watching that movie, the man was trying to beat the daughter and say, for, because she got pregnant, a teenage girl who got pregnant and all that, was trying to beat her. And, all, and the, father said, the daughter said, stop that, dad. What about so, 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 so. She was, he was surprised that he, the daughter used to see the text messages and the conversation he used to have with his mistress outside. You are doing such and you are telling me not to do this, not to do that. I told my mom and children, we don't want me to and I believe God to keep me with them. I said, have you seen another woman with me? I said, no. In my house, I told them, every of you that have a handset, if you, if you don't unlock any password, you know. Because my phone is there, everybody can pick it and do. I gave them the password, they know what it is. Most of the time when I'm driving and they are typing for me, so they know. So what are you looking for? Unless you have secrets. Praise the Lord. Hidden agendas. So if you can fear God, if your, parents, your children can see you, the fear of God in your life, you have lost that child. Because the, best, the first and the fundamental way to train a child is by your example. You living by example. Number two, how do you train a child? Through the word of God. Teaching them the word of God. Eli or Eli, I'm getting the name wrong because why? He, he, he's, is it Eli or Eli? No, I don't like the name because he misbehaved. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so Eli didn't train up his children very well because why? Though he was a priest, from the home of a priest, who preaches the, do you, do you see the irony of it? Who preaches the word of God to the people? He failed in teaching his children the word of God. He doesn't have time to study the word of God. That's why if you are here, you are occupying a leadership position. The only time you study your Bible is only when you know that you are the one that is going to take prayer here. Or you are the one that is going to preach here. That's the time you study the Bible, you are filled. It should be a, it should be a common thing, a lifetime thing, a habit that you study your Bible all the time. Also, create time where you study the Bible with your children. You teach them. When you see some ugly things in the news, it's a means to look, look for a scripture, search the scripture concerning that thing, and teach the children. You hear a, a, an occurrence or an happening that is good, of a good value, you teach them with it. You get the scripture to teach them. You haven't had an occurrence that is of a bad value issue, you teach them and say, hey, this is what the Bible says about it. Don't let them form an opinion about what people say. Let them form an opinion about what the word of God says. And you'll be amazed when your children start to give interpretation of the scriptures. We'll say, we read the scripture and say, what do you think this one is? What do you think that one is? I'm telling you the truth. We have had some Bible study in my house where some of the younger ones said some things that I didn't have gotten that revelation before. And they just said it. I said, and it made a meaning to me. Ah, that's true. That's a deep one. That's a deep one. You just said. Teach them. Study the word of God together. Teach them the word of God. Through the word of God, teach them the word of God. Teach them how God hates divorce. So they won't be planning to divorce. Teach them how God, or how God hates you uh, abusing people, bullying people, and they won't be. They won't oppress people. Teach them how to love, how God wants us to love our neighbor. And you see them, they have love. Teach them how God doesn't like you to hate people. And you see them not hate people. Teach them how God wants us to be generous. How God wants us to think beyond ourselves. How to respect other people. How to, to respect God's word. How to overcome temptations. Many parents are so proud, they can't even tell their children their weaknesses, how they failed in life. Did I failed at the time in my life doing this, this was my weakness and all that. But God helped me. So God can help you. What I'm telling you this is that so that you won't fail. I mean, making you know that it's possible to fail, to fall in this kind of temptation. But the way out, I've been ahead of you. I've been there before, and I don't want you to go through that. That's why I'm teaching you this now. Hallelujah. 
Teach them the word of God. Bring them to church. Don't leave them at home. So at home, teach them the word of God. Bring them to church. Let them hear God's word. Let your children should be able to sit by your side or when they get home and say, hello, what was Pastor Kyle saying? I didn't know that Pastor Sam said this and that. I don't understand it. What does he mean? Yes. Or hey, in our class today, uh, this teacher says so, so, so thing. Is it correct? We discuss it. We discuss it. Have time for them. Discuss it. Teach them the word of God. But at home, on your own, cautiously when you get home after church, especially those of them that go to the church, ask them and say, what did you learn in your children's church today? What did you learn in your church today? They said this, that's the only thing you learned. They said, what did you get? Said, okay, that's good. You are driving, teach them. Why? Well, the Bible said it. He said, when, 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 when they were still in the wilderness, planning to go to the promised land, what the instruction God was passing to Israel, he said, hey, teach your children. Let them write these scriptures. Put them in their wrists. Put them in the frontlets of their eyes. Put them in the doorpost. Wherever they go, let them see it. Let them read it. Let them remember. See it on their wrist. Put it in the frontlets of their eyes. He said, bring them to it all the time. Remind them. We are driving in the car. We talk about it. We are home. We talk about it. We are watching a movie. They are all watching. My boy is laughing. Find a way to get the world into it. I say, you see that word, the word of God. You see this, you see this thing now? It goes on. Okay. One laughing is a comedy, yes. It's a man shop, but yeah, but we get the word across. Every opportunity you are with them, teach them the word of God. Eli failed to teach them. Psalm 119, verse 9 says, Psalm 119, verse 9 says, How with that shall a young man cleanse his way? If by taking heed to the word of God. Verse, verse 11 is my golden scripture. I said, Thy word have I hidden in my that have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's God's word, not moral. Teach them moral, they will fail. Because hypo- moralists are hypocrites. Moralists are hypocrites. It's the word of God that you teach them that is hidden in their heart that will make them not sin against you. We've seen some good children who have been taught by their parents and at the point of fornication, that word ringing in their heart, they said, no. They were almost missing it, is it? They turn back and say, no, 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 no. Thy word have I hid in my heart. I may not sin against you. Teach them, come to their basis. Come to their understanding and teaching them the word. Eli failed in doing that. He would have had better children if he had done that. Another thing Eli failed in doing was that he failed to discipline them promptly. He failed to do what? Discipline them promptly. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. Proverbs 13, 24. I also get ready to give me Proverbs 22, verse 15, and Proverbs 29, verse 15. Proverbs 13, 24. He that spared his rod hated his son. He that loved him chastened him promptly. The word betimes means promptly. In another version, you see it, like the New King Jesus version might tell you promptly. He that spared his rod hated his son. He that loved him, chastened. The only word for chastening is what? Discipline. Discipline. Can you give me NIV? He that spared his Lord hated his son, but he that loved him, chastened him betimes, means promptly. And do it now. Not that later, later. Don't keep it as malice. She's wrong. Get a good place. There are different ways you measure discipline to children. Listen to this. A child that is less than seven years old if you don't discipline her or tell her what she did is wrong and why it's wrong at the time she does it, two, three hours later, she doesn't know what she did. You, you miss it. When you start to want to discipline her that time, she doesn't get what she had done. But at the time you are trying to discipline her, she just did something, take her to the backyard and talk to her about it. Okay? You know that thing is wrong? Why did you do it? Let her get the conviction of it. Whatever discipline measure you want to get, measure to him or her, do it at that time. And that's all. Three, four hours later, you won't remember. Don't even want to bring it up. You want to begin to do it three, four hours later. He's seeing you like, what did I do? The intensity of what she had done, she is, is watered down. Yes, ma'am. Good. Okay. Let me read the NIV while we're waiting for it. I say, whosoever spares the rod hates their children. Excuse me, don't think you love your children by sparing the rod. That you spare the rod didn't mean you love your children. No. 
But the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. When you spare the rod, it does not mean you love your children. No, 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 no. no. We're going to talk about what the rod is. The rod is not always the belt. That you carry the belt. And the rod sometimes could be a word. There are times to use the word. There are times to use the rod. I have different measure, measures of discipline in my house. When you see me raise the rod, you know that I have talked to that child about that thing before. I don't discipline a child with a rod if we have not talked about it before. Because anything I have not talked to you about before, when you do it, was a mistake. It was an error. But anything I have talked to you about before you do it, it was, it's an outright disobedience. And I discipline disobedience. I do. Yes, please. Okay, your question. My question is, what about when they missed it with formative behavior? Yeah. And then now they want to use the rod when they're older. You know, in Africa, they still use the rod. It doesn't matter how old you are. And I'm glad you said about using the word. Uh, what would you, what counsel would you give? Oh, you 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 missed it totally. When if you miss the formative formative years, and you now start want to get to use the rod in the when they are older, you've missed. You have lost that child totally. Oh, you have lost that child totally. It starts from the formative years. Is it formative years? The formative years. Praise the Lord. From that age of between zero. When I mean zero, from the womb. Zero to ten, to ten years. We stretch it to ten years right now. Praise the Lord. From the womb, how do you start from the womb? Is that praise the Lord? When the baby is in the womb, you start to speak scriptures into the baby. What you want that child to be? You, this child, you are the heritage of God, the apples of God's eye. You will not do the bidding of the devil. You are for signs and for wonders. You will obey God's word. God's word alone you will follow. Evil communication, the Bible says corrupt good manners. You will reject evil communications. People that will corrupt your manners will not be part of your portion. You start to speak the word. Your ears will be deafened to the counsel of the wicked. You will not sit with the ungodly. You start to speak God's word to them in, in the womb. Are you hearing me? And talk to them about letting them know Jesus. I, tell, I told you, I said, why my wife got pregnant? And then I start to speak the word that way. So the extent that if I want to play with the child, when I just come back from work and I want to amuse myself, I just put my hands and the baby in my wife's tummy, after speaking the word, I said, baby, kick for Jesus. He will hit me. Boom. So the extent that when they come out from the womb and they're on, and, and they're on the bed, and I just come back from my I, I come, they hear my voice. The sheep will hear my voice and they will obey me. The voice of the stranger will not obey. I will tell her and I said, baby, kick for Jesus. She will lift her leg up, hit it on the bed. Boom. Because that's what she was doing. I'm telling you the truth. That's my wife there. That's what she was doing where? In the womb. We talk to them. So you start from that age. That's the age where you start to do scriptures. My wife had this habit of when she's pregnant, she, she gets worship songs in the in uh, phones and all that and play the worship song and put it by the bedside. Praise the Lord. Songs of worship on her bedside, on her, on her tummy side. Hallelujah. And when these children come out alive, they like to, when they are making those noises, when many you play that worship song, they start to leave. The next thing they hear it, they hear it and calm down. Praise the Lord. Everything I tell you works. It is proven. Baby kick for Jesus, she sticks her leg up and hits it on the bed. Boom. Two, three days old baby. Because in the womb, she does it. When we put, baby kick for Jesus. Boom. If I put the hand here, baby, kick for Jesus. Boom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he failed to discipline them promptly. I want us to look at the scripture. Uh, he said, whoever spares the rod hates their children. So to come to that question, when you miss that formative years, you missed it with the, with the word, with the, with, with, with the rod totally. What you start to do in the other age, you start to pray. You do more of prayer and less of talking. You still be talking, but more of prayer. 
And again, you then begin to go extra mile in living an exemplary life. Extra mile. Because you missed it from the beginning. Because there's a saying that says you can't burn an iron when it is cold. But a very hot steel or iron, what happens? Easily to burn. But when it's cold, you can't. You can only turn shaping it to the shape you want when it's very hot. You understand what I'm saying? So at the other age, you see, because why? Any form of discipline you are doing to him or her at that time, she's, he or she sees it as punishment. You know, have wrong interpretation. Hatred. Oh, if my dad doesn't love me. My mother doesn't love me. They hate me. You understand what I'm saying? So when a child starts to interpret that wrongly, oh, my children, you know what secret? I discipline them more in the house. They love me more. They play with me more. They want to come around me more. They want to play with me more. I'm the one that disciplines them more. <laughs> do, you, do you get what I just said? That's the truth. Because why I also tell you that, hey, I love you. When I finish with that, I say, you know I love you. You know I did this out of love. I love you. Sometimes I might leave them like that. The next day, one will talk about it, I say, oh, what I did to you is because I love you. And that's what that scripture says. Whosoever spears the rod, what? Hates their children. But the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. And I bring what the scripture says. So I'm doing this not because of I hate you, but because I love you. And that's what the word of God says. No, no government, no authority can be wiser than the word of God. True? So that's the best prescription. But we got to be careful to be, to the, not to use this rod in extreme. Praise the Lord. You might not like this. Sometimes you turn your face away to indulge them. Praise the Lord. And don't use the rod when you're angry. We're all feeling it. Even the man talking to you feels sometimes in it. Most times it's not good to use the rod when you're what? Angry. You will miss it. Whether the rod or the mouth or whatever rod, you will miss it when you're angry. Praise the Lord. The, cont- the, 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 the essence of the discipline of the chastening will be missed. Because Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6, the Bible says, God disciplined those whom he loved. The essence of discipline is because of what? Church, because of what? Because of love. Not because of because of love. Because you love this person and you don't want this person to be worse. So that's how it is even a pastor to a church member. Hey, I don't like what you're doing. What you did the other day, I don't like it. Step it off. Because I love you. I don't want anything you to go differently. So if you are doing anything and nobody's talking about you, do what you like and all that, nobody's talking, oh man, nobody, they don't love you. They want you to be destroyed. That's why we all need to humble ourselves. A wife can discipline the husband. The husband can discipline the wife. The boss we should submit ourselves one to another. We might not like it, but that's it. Yesterday morning, something happened. I was so low, and I needed, I was so low. There was a confrontation you know, in the spiritual realm that was hitting me. And I mentioned it to my wife. She didn't even pamper me. She just gave it to me hard. I said, is that the way you could comfort me? But, but that's what I needed. I would have wanted some pampering and say, you know, <laughs> I would have wanted some pampering and say, don't mind, it's well, it's okay, God loves you, God will have it. But you see, that, you see, that's sympathy, that's pity party, that's not what God wants from me. What she gave me actually is what God wants, but I didn't like it. Initially, I didn't like it, I said, how can you this me? You, you don't know even comfort on this kind of thing, you just hit me. Job said it to his friend, said, miserable comforters are you. But see, Job needs to get those kind of miserable comforters to be who God wants him to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was hard what she, what she gave me, but that's what, my, what I needed to come out of it. What I needed to come out of it is not to be pampered at that time. But I wanted to be pampered. Say, oh, sweetheart, oh, don't mind. It is well. God will see you through. Don't mind. God will have his way. It is okay. It's okay. He just gave me a scripture, hit me, and said, it's okay. I said, and she, and she was walking, and I said, 
And you're walking away. Is that, is that the best you can do? Is that the best way you can comfort me? She left when she called me. I showed her I'm not happy. I said, man, I told you I'm going. You just, he said, oh. But as I'm talking, something, the Holy Spirit is telling me that, you know that what you need. <laughs> and can I tell you the truth? It made me come out. made me come out. made me come stronger. That's what discipline is. You discipline those whom you love. You are with somebody, you know, discipline, not telling you the right thing. Your friends, you have friends who don't tell you the right thing. You know the story of that king in the Bible and that prophet? He has 400 prophets lying to him. And, uh, and uh, Joshua said, is that the only ones you have? He said, there's only one. He won't tell me what I want. And that one came and thought for told him a lie. He said, tell me the truth. <laughs> I know the truth. He doesn't want to hear. <laughs> Many of us don't like to want to hear the truth. <laughs> but it's the truth actually that shows love, that helps you out. Praise the Lord. Friends, this year, 2020, surrender people with, who love you, who tell you the truth. Not people who lie to you. Not people who you are feeling or you are misbehaving is tapping you at the back and saying, oh, that's good. No, they don't like you. They don't love you. If they love you, they tell you the truth. You mess up. Though we have to find a way of telling the truth. We have to do it also in love. But you got to tell the truth. You got to tell the truth. Praise the Lord. I and I will settle down on whether she told my own in love or not. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He failed to discipline them. So let, let's look at the scripture. Proverbs 13, 20. Oh, we have done that. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Proverbs 22, verse 15. We're almost time. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Verse 22, verse 15. Folly is bound. No, can you give me nine King James, please? The other scriptures, unless I say otherwise, please. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Thank you. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. A child will want to put, a, put bees in his ear. What do you think? Sometimes when you see children, those of us who are, you, 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 when you see some children, when you see children the way they do things sometimes, you'll be amazed. Have you gone to a restaurant even to eat with a child? You brought food for the next day, all the ketchup you squeeze it on, shh, all the salt, shh, and it will taste it and can't eat it and dump it. I was in Cleveland in November, and the breakfast, the compulsory, the complimentary breakfast, we all came down. And my, I, the Lord opened my eyes to be looking at the family. There's this young boy among them that came. Everybody was taking a buffet, a breakfast, and all that. And he took, watch, he took his own meal. He went, shh. I was wondering, I said, is, it, is there a sauce that I do not do? I saw he poured mustard. Shh. Uh, ketchup. Shh. 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 Listen to this. He went to sit. Look here. You know, the Lord opened my Everybody was busy during the other But my own eyes was on him at the corner. So he tasted it. He looked. This way, he looked that way. <laughs> he covered it. He went to the trash. I trashed it. <laughs> I went to take something else. That's how a child is. That's a child is. A child doesn't think the way you think. So you don't leave a child to himself. You don't leave a child to herself. If you light a candle light right now, a six-month-old child who is crawling already, want to see if it's a flower, want to put his hand in it. That's why you don't leave a child to themselves. They must say foolishness is born in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So you discipline them. And I tell you the truth, he remembers it, he will never do it again. A child stands on the staircase, he just sees the ground floor. If he was going to walk to it on it, that wouldn't be bad. He feels that maybe I should fly like Superman and, and go down. Without thinking of he or she's going to get hurt. I'm amazed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The foolishness is born in the heart. Let's look at the scripture. Proverbs 29, 15. Proverbs 29, 15. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 15. Hallelujah. Proverbs 29, 15. It says, The rod and reproof give wisdom. A child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. When you leave a child to himself, he will bring his mother to shame in the future. But the rod and reproof give wisdom. 
give wisdom. When you say child without character, it's a child that will not properly train by their parents. I mean, when you say an adult without character, an adult that will not train well by her children. This is to this. If you see an adult who respects elderly people, you know he was trained at home to respect them. That's the truth. If you see a man who respects a woman who respects his wife, oh, he was trained. You see a wife who respects her husband because she was trained that way. Praise the Lord. Training don't just fall on people. You have to, it's a process thing. You have to go through them. Hallelujah. Can we look at the scripture and look it at Amplified Classic, Proverbs 27, verse 11? Let's look at it at Ampli- Amplified Classic. Proverbs 27, verse 11. And I want to talk to you about my last point. After Proverbs 27, verse 11, we're talking about my last point. I will go. He said, my son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me as having failed in my parental duty. You see what I'm saying? So, my son, be wise. So what is he saying? Children, please listen to what I'm treating you so that in future they, I will not be put to shame. Nobody will say, oh, this is a, you, 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 you came from a bad parent. No. He said, my son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me as having failed in my parental duty. For those of us that are adults that have actually missed proper parental brought up, uh, training, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you now. If you really open your heart to the Holy Spirit, He will train you. So I've always said that you could be born again but without home training. Hallelujah. Be wise, my child, and make my heart glad. Then I will be able to answer my critics. A parent should be able to stand outside. And Eli didn't have any of such. He couldn't stand outside and say, no, my son didn't do it. He knew they were doing it. Because he didn't train them. If I train you not to lie, and in the deep situations at home, you don't lie. When somebody accuses you wrongly, I'll say, no, he, he can't do that. Am I making sense? No, no, he can't do that. He, he can't do that. Or she can't do that. Because I know what I have been imparted on you. But, but, but Eli, Eli, Eli failed. He failed to discipline them promptly. The last point is that he failed to make them know how to give reverence to the offering of God. He failed to make them know how to give reverence to the offering of God. It could be offering of God in the place of prayer. It could be offering of God in the place of worship and praise. Praise the Lord. If you ask a father, during time of worship, you are on the phone, in between phone and all that. You are in church. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are chatting. You are chatting. And your son and daughters are looking at you on the phone. They grow up that way. The day they will be doing it, I say, ah, daddy, see me. Praise the Lord. You missed it that way. He failed to make them know how to give reverence to the offering of God. Let me tell you what how, how, re, how God wants us to reverence his offering. Matthew 5, 23 to 24. Matthew chapter 5, 23 to 24. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, 23 to 24. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 5, 23 to 24. So, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, no, can you give me on the King James now, please? Thank you, sir. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, that is your offering to the altar, and there remember that thy brother had ought against thee. Okay, sir, do it to the amplifier. That we understand it. So, you are a prophet, Emmanuel. I'm going to anoint you in the office of that prophet soon. So, you got to bribe me. Praise the Lord. I will take bribe from only Emmanuel's hand. Amen. <laughs> so, Matthew 5, 23. Let's look at it. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift... No, I said give me an amplified, please. Give me it on the amplified. The amplified, amplified. Matthew chapter 5. Thank you. So, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and why there you remember that your brother has something, such as a grievance or legitimate complaint against you. Verse 24 says, leave your offering there. Don't, don't present the offering yet. Leave your offering there at the altar and go f- first make peace with your brother and then come and present your offering. Don't give an offering of, that will bring condemnation to you. You have malice in your heart towards somebody and you are coming and drop. No. 
You, you, you should be, this reverential fear in your heart. Hey, I'm drop, giving my offering to God. But my heart is not clean. Calm down. Calm down. Go settle with your wife. Go and settle with your friend. Go and settle with that, your neighbor. Go and give a call. You offended me or you said, I'm sorry concerning that thing you said. I see some husband and wife quarrel, come to church, pretend like as if nothing. They won't take Holy Communion and go like as if nothing. And they're still keeping malice to each other. They will, you will even be praying. They are saying amen. So they, even in their quarter at home, they are doing family devotion. They are pretending to be praying. And it doesn't go beyond the ceiling. No. That's the best time to settle. We settle a quarter before the morning prayer. And in short, those, two, those morning devotion and night devotion is good for a family. The family devotion, the family altar. It's a very good opportunity to settle it, settle those issues you had with your spouse. Then you pray. You don't need to pray too long. The heaven will open over you. Before the evening prayer comes again, and you, you are carrying the grudges, struggling yourself, and I won't talk to him, I won't talk to another. But you know that you want to come before God now in the evening for people to pray? Come, let's talk about that thing. Sorry, concern that thing. But the fear of God. You are coming to church. You have been doing struggles or... Before you come down from the park in law, say, ah, ah. You, you don't even allow it to get here. Say, uh, we are going to church now. I don't want us to just go there and not be sorry because I had that thing yesterday. Those are all the avenues. Those are the avenues God has put for you. I do it. I'm telling you, oh, you think that pastors don't have, could not have issues? It, we do. Don't say that. We do. But that's my wife here. If there be issues we have, we settle it before the morning prayer. If it happens during the day, we settle it before the night devotion. If it happens sometimes after the morning prayer and all that, and we are driving towards church, if it's church we are coming, we settle it before then. If it's not church we are going, and we are going anywhere I'm going to, I'm going to for favor. Even to the stores, I'm going to the stores, I'm going for favor. And I don't want that quarter to close the heaven and make me not get the favor. Say, let's settle that. Let's settle it. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, I apologize. You sound sick. And she too does that. If that's the basis, what's the basis of you settling? God. The fear of God. If that's the basis of settling issues, do. 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 Don't just come. This is what Eli or Eli did. Eli became so familiar with God. He could keep malice. He could give offering when he knows he's not in the right standing. He could do whatever. He could come to church and pray and sing and do like as if nothing happened. And there are quarrels at home. There are issues going on. He could be called that not come to church when he doesn't want to. You know many of you did it. Uh, the words that happen, I won't go to church. He could come and say, yes, I'm not going to say sorry. I'm not apologizing. And he would take the Holy Spirit is convincing you. This, you want to take Holy Communion and you still have ought against your husband or against your wife. Say, hey, that's me. I won't tell you sorry. I've already been telling you sorry. Take it. He could drop the offering without mindful. No, I don't do that. I, I fear God. I reverence God. I don't do that. I settle. Let somebody settle. I settle. The Bible said it said. If you go further on that Matthew chapter 5, let's go on. Go, go to verse 24, 25 of Matthew chapter 5. There's a place where it says, settle with your adversary before I take you to the magistrate. He said, come to tense quickly at the earliest opportunity with your opponent at law while you are with him on the way to court. So the opponent does not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you are thrown into prison. Before you get say, hey, come, sorry, sorry, don't mind. All those shouting, I was shouting that. I'm, I'm sorry. I was upset. I was really upset. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You want me to fix it? I'll fix it. Then before you say, let's go. Let's go to the court. We go to the magistrate. And you go there and they throw you into prison. <laughs> Settle with your adversary on the way. That's how it is in marriage. Settle with your spouse on the way before the church. Settle with your spouse before they leave the home. Don't spoil the man's day. Don't spoil the woman's day. Settle before they leave home. Settle. Okay, okay, you want to leave now. I don't want you to live in that, country, in that way. Okay, let's settle. The other you are not getting. I'm sorry. Or why is going to say, please, I'm sorry concerning that. Let's forget it. Let's move on. He's got talking to somebody this evening. Say, I won't fail. 
as early faith. Hallelujah. I said, I don't like Eli. He misbehaved. Praise the Lord. They say, I won't fail as Eli failed. In the name of Jesus. Can we bow down our head? I don't know which part of the word of God touched you. Say, Father, give me the wisdom and the grace to do the work you are putting in my hand. It's a great responsibility to be parents. Destinies are in your hand that will shape on the world. And God has put words in your mouth to train them. The Holy Spirit teach me with the wisdom to do that. And if there be anyone here, you are keeping malice with anybody, whether it's your spouse or your relative or friends, let it go. Take away that bitterness from your heart. Forgive. Let it go. Take away that bitterness. Take away that malice. Take away that anger. Ask the Holy Spirit to heal your mind. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Forgive, friends. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yes, let it go. Let it go. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we just want to thank you for your word. We ask that you sanctify us. Let us not fail you in the place of bringing up our family. Help us, O oh God, to repair the broken parts already. In the name of Jesus. For every offering that we will give, we declare them blessed. 